Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to episode six of The Muse. My name is Maya Abushtid. I'm a shamanic practitioner, energy and body work facilitator, preparation and integration guide. I welcome again Joël Rabat, astro coach and a dear friend uh, that has been on the journey of astrology for the last three years. Four five years. <laughs> three years professionally, 25 years. Well, already on the professional path pff, since 2019, so mm -hmm. almost four, four five years now, mm -hmm. uh, we're entering the fifth, and uh, and yeah, since I was a kid, mostly. <laughs> yes, since early on, our passions that we, we kind of yeah. numb until yeah. later on in life. True. Well, yeah. Hello, hello, everyone. Welcome again. Thank you again for coming it. back. <laughs> Thank you for listening. Our last episode uh, had um, nice reviews, very nice reviews. Thank you all for getting back to us. There's more interest um, as we go along on this journey together. It's a new concept. It's really, it's not even a concept. We're, we're weaving a completely different combination of traditions uh, between shamanism and astrology. And uh, it, it's quite fascinating because it's, really about this creative space that we are we are just tapping into and discovering along the way and as we have started the muse in november 2023 um there has been also things that were coming up related to how can we uh, guide others uh, and learn as we are guiding because it's all always a learning experience always. for for be it the facilitator and or the guide and the rece receiver um, in return we are always interacting and and exploring together and on that note I would like to start first with the with this kind of a culmination of this full moon in Leo um, <laughs> somehow somehow a, cul <laughs> a culmination for <laughs> us in uh, in setting up this one year program uh, that is combining mysticism, shamanism, astrology, and guiding on a monthly basis uh, with sessions with both of us live sessions, and also these these sessions would include shamanic journeying, will include astrological insights, will include and personalization of astrology. On, uh, uh, so this means that on a personal level, you would be able to touch on how every ingress of the sun, every entering of the sun in a new sign, how it is also uh, touching on your chart and how can you read it with your chart. And this is also where I'd like to highlight the importance of having your chart being read. Um, yes. It does yes. help a lot. I mean, uh, there's always things that remind us of what is going on. And somehow for the mind, it helps us understand so that whatever we're going through physically and emotionally and spiritually, uh, there's there's a kind of a an embrace of 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 the happening. Uh, so the, there's there's also a kind of a witnessing is that. Kind yes, of. and 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 you know uh, the the lovely astrologer uh, Austin Kopok says that um, we're not the 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 astrological transits of a certain date. We have a chart, and and of course it depends on wherever things are happening in the chart. This is how we feel it less or more because we're we're always living in a collective, right? Like we're always having the weather around us. Now, sometimes the weather interferes with what we need to do. And sometimes the weather is just the weather and we're living our life, you mm. know, being aware of it, but mm. not really affecting us. Mm. And personalizing transits or learning, I'm not, we're not going to be able to, you know, personalize it for everyone, but learning the tools and, and understanding how to weave it and having your birth chart and understanding where it's happening, because we all have the 12 signs and we all have all the planets. Uh, so how is it functioning for us? It's an, a more embodied way of life. That's how we live. 
both of us uh, we're aware of the collective and we're still you know embodied and we're we we try as much as possible to align ourselves and and yeah and that's a beautiful co-creative space that we've been you know weaving since actually yes this summer and this is somehow it is a sort of a art of manifestation mm-hmm. and that's a way as well that we wanted both of us to start uh, working with the new moon and the full moon uh, in a more personalized way with understanding the arcs. And this is something that you brought into my uh, attention um, earlier uh, last year. And actually, we're, we're now ma- like completely into the manifestation of it. Like, how can we weave for ourselves? And if others want to be in the journey, they're most welcome because we keep on growing and we it's lovely to grow together. So that's the intention behind our Indeed. program and our Indeed. journey. Yeah. Indeed. And this program is starting on the spring equinox. And uh, I'll be mentioning again um, around the end of this episode that there will be a Q&A session in February in case you want to join and learn more about the program. There will be registration all through the month of February and early March. And then the registrations will stop uh, in order to, for us to really bring in the number of people and basically uh, attend or, or um, uh, attend a community platform uh, so that you are also tapping into questions between each other and with us. Um, so this program, we're excited for it. It's something that also, you know, the muse has been has been inspiring ru- us it's 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 amazing in- it's amazing right? i'm gonna i'm gonna drop a mama'ul which is uh uh which is uh, uh in arabic and it's it's something that you know if we're not living in awe uh then we're missing on a lot that is happening yeah. every single day and awe can be the depth of sadness the depth of grief the depth of loss and awe can be the depth of joy and and thrill and excitement and uh, we are navigating those days really day by day with so much happening a spectrum through the day of emotions and so so on that on that note on that note on that note (laughs) that note (laughs) full moon in leo and Leo, uh, want some drama. Who when some is it? <laughs> when is it really happening? And we are already feeling it as we're recording this. Uh, it's amazing. Yeah. It's always the case. It's yeah. always the case. So, Joel, tell us about this full moon in Leo. So, everybody, uh, brace yourselves. <laughs> we have a full moon at seven fifty-three p.m. Beirut time. On, um, of course, I forgot the date. <laughs> 25th. 25th on the 25th yes time. on the 25th of jan <laughs> time is playing really it's um it's um yeah it's game with us anyway so on the 25th of jan we have um we're giving beirut time first so it's 7 53 p.m beirut time it's gonna be sick um 6.53 p.m. Paris, Amsterdam, and uh, 5.53 p.m. Lisbon and GMT, so UTC. Uh, okay, so as you noticed, we're already rising the energy because that's exactly what this full moon is. It's, I mean, me and Maya, we're feeling it so much. We're feeling this, you know, the eye of intensity, like the ca- in capital letter. Well, because it's a full moon in Leo. First of all, Leo uh, likes the sunshine and it soaks the sunshine um, and it wants the attention. And it's right next to Mr. Pluto that is the Lord of the darkness and the underworld and you know, the primal elemental power. So, uh, and it's squaring the lovely Jupiter. So we have a benefic in the mix <laughs> doing its thing. The thing with Jupiter is that it, it has a tendency to exaggerate. So the first thing that mm-hmm. comes to my mind is like, hold your horses, mm-hmm. everyone. Just, you know, mm-hmm. try to understand that, you know, the triggering effect the intensity and sometimes the 
obsession that comes with Pluto is needed to exaggerate in order to see really what was hidden underneath. And we talked last episode about Pluto. Uh, we talked about the moving of signs from Capricorn to Aquarius. So yes, we're moving signs, yet still this energy is mm. deep and intense mm. and powerful. And there's a lot of power game uh, in regards to, to, to Pluto whenever we speak about this, this archetype. And the reason why these you know collective because you know um first of all uranus neptune and pluto work on a collective level unless they touch our chart of course and it's you know uh, triggering something in us and they most of the time they do but still they're collective so there is in the weather there is something that is stirring for the next 20 years the powers at play in regards to, you know, technology, mental uh, process, mental health, um, you know, uh, innovation and techniques and, and connectedness because air elements want to connect. They, they, the air element wants to bring things. To, the air goes from, from a place to another. Mm. Um, it's, 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 uh, it's the way that the earth um and but anyway we're um we have the atmosphere so this is like the the air holds all all these you know components on earth so um it, it's yeah i want to i want i want you to flesh it out uh, <laughs> energetically what you feel because you were you had like a big um yeah input on this talking to an air sign um well yeah <laughs> um yeah i mean there there's um you know this to me is a ceremony what we are doing is quite ceremonial uh and before it was more in person and somehow during the shift from being in person with people in ceremony on the new moon and the full moon it was full on Every month, there would be two ceremonies with, with groups of people. So for me, it was about uh, shifting that into mm -hmm. how can this, how can every episode be a ceremonial setting in which there is mm -hmm. the reading of the energies, the, the feeling of the spirits of the land, the feeling of the spirits of uh, whoever is engaging with us, be it, you know, be it Pluto, <laughs> I love Pluto. Pluto is 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 me too. You know, I mean, um, uh, to me, Pluto has been a great uh, a great ally because f for me in my shamanic journey, it has been all about the underworld. I could there was the angelic realms did not really show in the big. Yeah, I would be up in the air, but I was outside my body, and mm. the whole journey has been to come back to the body, and so. Yeah. As we come back to the body more and more, we're going to feel more. And the people who are going through a lot physically and the people who are exiting the body as well, uh, because the body is just, there is a capacity for the body to heal. And when there's a lot that has been stacked over time, the body is not yeah. able to really yeah. process everything. And so we, and, ex we exit the body. And and anyway, Pluto is about the power of destruction, right? And inherently, destruction doesn't hold a judgment within it. Destruction is destruction. It can be good. Sometimes yeah. it's it's important and essential to destroy something in order to, Indeed. to Indeed. build on new and cleaner foundations. So I want you to just give mm. people an idea when you say ceremony like how do you define ceremony mm. what, what is ceremony for you because mm. i think while we're weaving this journey it's important for people to understand like what mm. we what we mean by this mm. yeah i mean i get this question many times from people who attend ceremonies and somehow it's so mystical uh, it's so mystical right. it's so right. mysterious ceremony the, the the 
the, the concept, the, the structure of a ceremony is based on intention. If we want to put a structure to it, anything can be ceremonial when there's an intention. And the intention is basically what directs a ceremony. Now, a ceremony is also a setting where, where there's, a, there's, there's a creation, there's an intentional creation of a sacred space. Yes. And that sacred space becomes the space that we are living in every day. But in, in the beginning, to tap into what ceremony is, there has to be an invocation. A, a, an evocation of a space that is different. Some people call it altered, but it's actually an expanded space, a space that that looks the same, but it's not the same. And so we tap into different senses in ceremony that are not the common senses that we use in order like the default mode network that is like all about thinking about mm -hmm. things and 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 uh, ruminating and organizing and planning yes. but also yes. ruminating about the past and also being worried about the future yes. ceremony and is a intention setting. indeed and intention Again. is the most important being aware of what's under our yeah. motivation to do things and that is plutonian that's why i wanted you as well yeah. to flash it for people because yeah. people sometimes you know struggle with the archetypes but archetypes are everywhere we all Indeed. connect to them differently and it doesn't we don't need people to be to think the same things but we need mm -hmm. them to connect in order to make it to heal to go beyond like when you bring an intention to the surface right that's what pluto that's where pluto starts healing um when yeah. we bring this from the underworld like what was the at the core of this mm -hmm. what was this for me and i bring it into bring it about and to the upper world this is how i start constructing on a different ground mm. i think this is important in the astrology of what's happening mm -hmm. and and you know um we mentioned the eye in intensity and when we were we were preparing for the for this episode what came up is the me in the we the me yeah. in the we and that's also related to how one enters a ceremony because if there is no sense of self already yes. any sense of self entering a ceremony and and really shuffling things and identifying with the collective too much yes is 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 a disintegration and if there is a disintegration already which we have been i mean if there's anything happening it's disintegration at the moment still we talk about yeah. construction of things but it's like one piece of the puzzle that can drop and another piece that can drop while things are also shuffling and shuffling and shuffling yes and to link it astrologically to this full moon the full moon in Leo, Leo is about self, right? It's about the individual, about, yeah. it's about the it's prominence about of someone. It's about the me. And what's funny is that, you know, the sun, which, is, which the interest of the sun is Leo, that's the domicile of the sun, is in the collective, is more, you know, concerned about the collective, like the we. And at the same time, ancient astrologers and you know the, the ancient um, uh, significations of the moon was the people so it's the people in the individual and it's like all these concepts coming about and okay where do I stand in this collective mm -hmm. and can there be a place for both mm -hmm. um and this is where Jupiter coming into square in Taurus at six degrees, it's coming to check in on our belief systems because Jupiter is about, you know, bettering things and mm. make, making them more stable. And it's mm. about, you know, belief and religion and, and, and you know, justice, um, you know, the, the law uh, that we that we use to construct and to make better worlds. But it's in square to all this. So it's like, yeah, check in with your beliefs. Now on a physical manifestation, sometimes it's going to be like an exaggeration of trauma. Yeah. And if you feel triggered, please 
just try to understand yourself before projecting on other people mm -hmm. because we are going to be triggered the mm -hmm. collective is triggering us the news are triggering us mm -hmm. we're we, there are there's so much happening in the world and we are being aware of so much darkness and so mm -hmm. much you know <clears throat> ugly stuff yeah and it is what it is as mm -hmm. it is like you say so yeah that's, and yeah and yeah and you know there is there is also more more schism more more split between what how we see the world and how the so-called the world sees itself sees <laughs> itself or 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 how the world is being expressed and there's there's mm. there's more split between the me and the we and it this world doesn't reflect who i am so what is going on within me still that i am i'm 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 struggling with in order not to only not really to embrace what's happening because uh, there is the how can we accept injustice how can we accept uh, abuse yes. how can we accept manipulation how can topics. we accept the word n uh, which everybody is talking about uh, and i'm sure i'm sure whoever is listening and relates uh, can understand what that word is it's just being so so shared now that everything is based on it and it it becomes more more like emphasizing on 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 something it's like you know in media you know better also joel when when you, when there's there's an ad that that is not the the message behind it is so just um, shallow it does hit more than uh, ads that are more intentional because it's kind of a negative impact and the negative impact has an impact on people. Yeah, it's, um, and honestly, if we want to look at it with a, with a more, you know, object, objective point of view, this is what, this is the intention behind Pluto's, you know, upheaval and destruction. Sometimes, mm -hmm. you know, it, it, unfortunately yeah sometimes it happens that we we feel that we need the transformation because pluto is about transformation mm. but but most of the time it becomes so painful to mm. stay the way we are that we go into the transformation and that's why pluto comes and yeah. you know makes it more dramatic yeah and, and, and difficult to stay to stay in the in that cocoon we need to get out of it mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. it yeah squeezes. This, this, it squeezes it squeezes this, this more moon is all about you know understanding this the arc of manifestation let's think of it it was the last new moon in leo was in in around the 16th of august mm. um 2023 so mm. 2023 so mm. we're talking about um uh, you know um uranus was um uh, was direct um it went retrograde and at the la at the end of august now uh, in a in couple of days actually on saturday uh uranus will go direct again mm. so it feels like there is this kind of marking okay during the full moon we don't have like a direct uh impact from either Uranus or or Neptune, which is great news. <laughs> but we still have, you know, Pluto. And then, you know, the cup, the less than 48 hours after the full moon, a lot of things are happening. Yeah, 27th right? so, of January. Yeah. 27th of January, 9.35 a.m. here. Mm. We're having, you know, Uranus going uh going direct. And right after same time almost the sun will be squaring jupiter as if taking this message even further for us the plutonian message the plutonian message the this full moon in leo the sun in in, in aquarius is carrying you know the sun represents you know the the the, the vitality of our, our spirit health yeah and and it's like 
you know it's taking in further this message it mm. it's good to have like if we were gonna have a square <laughs> with a planet it's good to have a square with a benefic like jupiter right mm. it's gonna emphasize uh, these things um, about you know belief systems and how we how we can you know what can we do with our worlds and where our beliefs are standing in the way or where we they're bettering us um, mm -hmm. the mischievous part on this full moon we need to talk about it again Mars 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 is um, being approached by Mercury and uh and on 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 saturday as well by you know by 5 p.m we have mercury conjo conjoining mars and we spoke about mars and uh, mercury for a while in these um podcast episodes mars and mercury are mischievous uh are controversial are uh, they create some you know possibility of because mercury by itself is neutral right mercury is the planet of communication and data and mars is you know mars is mars it's gonna you know sever cut remove whatever you know uh, create place for anger and you know it wants to move forward so when we <laughs> we having a planet of communication uh like like uh, mercury is next to mars this full this full moon has already this potential they are squaring the nodes there is a square with the nodes that is um the nodes i don't know if we explained this before the nodes are the ecliptic point so the north node is more like our hunger to move forward um the indians um myth like to uh call it the head of a dragon uh, so it's like our dharma and and the the south node is more like uh the the tail of the dragon so the karma the, and where we yeah, come from yeah the path so these, and the, where we come from yeah yeah so these these planets being you know mars squaring the nodes it feels <laughs> to me like you know again our action mode is triggering and it's actually in between those points which feels karmic which feels like we are writing history i mean everybody's feeling that but it feels like in a, in, on a personal level um this this kind of karma is uh is it's like shifting sh shifting the the shifting the script uh, for 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 individuals and um being mindful being mindful of you know our triggers the way we can you know splash our words um uh, it, it it's it's gonna it's gonna be more helpful than going into action just because we feel restless in our thoughts um mm, and and yeah. also and also you know sometimes we're not able to be mindful and yes. when, when this is happening maybe looking at channeling anger in a different way um yes engaging the body engaging the body moving the body uh, just either dancing or stretching or 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 going go for a shaking, run shaking, for a shaking walk. the body just being in your own house you don't have to go out just shake the body go into deep breathing allow allow that sound to come out in a way where it's not being sent in the same intensity to others but rather allowing the expression of stacked energy it is all held energy karma is held energy regardless yes. of it being generational and related to my grandmother or my grand grandmother it is stacked energy yes. that has been generationally just you know handed over oh you take this oh no no i'll take care of this no no you take this because it's not mine it's not mine and so right. it's it's more like if you're really going through a lot and you've been going through a lot there is this okay identification that something big is happening there is a spiritual emergency happening with you allowing things to to settle when you need to sit down and allowing things to shake when when they need to be shaken at the same time seeing the impact on you afterwards because every time 
I know from myself, every time I get angry or yes. I, I go into this rage Frustration. And, I, and I express, I, my body gets hit so bad afterwards if I'm expressing it in a context that is not held. And, and so this is where, how can the, it's all energy. How can energy move in a way through you where you're not over analyzing yes. because the man. And instead of projecting it on others, right? Because and this that's is what exactly, happens this when is we exactly stack. exactly what I'm saying, the projection. And at the same time, the mental analysis, this is what's happening because this person is like this and I'm like that and all of that. Allowing, allowing energy to move and sitting with things it's like catharsis is happening you can't counteract catharsis you can't sit in catharsis mm. and so allowing catharsis to happen through you move with it dance with it there is the dance still there's the dance and to me leo is is, is about the heart as well allowing yeah. also the heart and creation to yeah. be to be the the, the 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 seat of your soul the seat of your being come back to the heart whenever you can once a day come back to the heart breathe in the that's heart. a great advice for the full moon by the way uh when yeah because there will be triggers there will be if there is no trigger there would be a sense of intensity that we're yeah. feeling already yeah building up mm -hmm. so this intensity because the sun anyway conjuncted the pluto just before that full moon mm -hmm. so uh, this sense of intensity use it um use it to in order to go back inside and checking in instead of checking out because honestly the, like suppressing the energy doesn't help suppressing intensity doesn't help it creates like a bigger thing sickness but... cancer is based on that cancer yeah, yeah true the so-called sickness the cancer sickness is based on stacked anger and stacked hatred and stacked frustration and and so eventually the body takes the toll the body keeps the score yeah and, and yeah, so the body keeps the score on that note, Shout out to that. I, I, in intensity, there's, you know, we, we, we the wanted to we. dramatize this episode to the point yes. where we're like, okay, how can we talk about this full moon while, while not saying, oh, it's going to be cool. You know, it's a full moon, put your crystals outside and activate them and cleanse your mess, well, cleanse your altar. Well, you can, you can cleanse listen you can because the energy of pluto is so can be so healing Indeed. when we just don't ignore it and suppress right like what we do like what you said like um like uh being uh on the schedule if we're not on schedule if we take the time to just cons yeah uh, to, to tell just me about it knowledge I've been I've been really playing with time lately and time has been just really well, just being Neptune a great has teacher. Been, at least Neptune is not. Hello, Neptune. Thank you for you know allowing us the space to just Namaste, Neptune. without without confusion. Yeah. Okay. So I think we're at the end. There is um uh, yeah, there will be some nice um trines with jupiter with uranus between mercury and uranus on sunday for example uh mercury uh, venus our the lovely 28th. venus and in, in the in on um, on the 20 actually venus on the 29th the the night from the from sunday to monday Next at 3 a.m Venus and Jupiter are having like a nice aspect so we're gonna feel it within this kind of you know a bit of uh, a lot of action we're gonna feel some stability from the from the earth uh, signs and you know S Saturn is in, in a nice sextile to to Venus and to um, to Jupiter so mm. yeah we have this yes it's intense but we have like nice stuff happening on the side just after this um, breather and right before the the the, the new moon actually we're having um, mercury ingressing into aquarius so automatically it will encounter pluto the new moon and of february the new moon of february okay we'll so we're going to be talking about this more on the next episode not really uh, because mm. that will be happening on the 5th of feb so oh. just 
you know, just before um, the new. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. It's ushering us into the into the into the new moon, and you know, and the last aspect of the sun will be a square with Uranus on the eighth of Feb right before the new moon so it's quite a busy fortnight uh but at the same time you know allowing things to wane after the new after the full moon mm. and just allowing taking in taking in the goodies and you know taking in the wisdom and you know moving moving along that's life right yeah. we keep on yeah. moving along moving yeah. with it moving with it so for now, you know, we wish you a happy full moon, maybe a blessed full moon, at least a blessed full moon. May every day, every day I start my day with may this be a blessed day. And whatever that means for you in terms of including the intensity, the loss and also the thrilling moments, it's it's all a spectrum of <sighs> whoa, whatever is happening in terms of the layers of life. Uh, Joel, thank you again. Uh, thank, thank you, you. For, uh, for for your insights, uh, and and I and I yours. really I really am grateful for for everything that you're doing and and what you're adding to these episodes. The Muse will be hosting mm -hmm. other uh, specialists. Also, Joel Joel is 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 a co-creator uh with me and uh, these episodes uh, astrologically and shamanically will continue uh as as we go uh, and i i wish you i wish you a blessed full moon we wish you a blessed full moon there will be a q a uh during the month of february we'll be announcing the date uh, and time of this q a uh this will be a free q a uh, that you can join in order to raise questions regarding this one year journey one year program that we are both offering uh again starting on march 20th uh of this year uh the first session will include a an equinox ceremony uh and followed by a session with joel so some sessions will be extended with shamanic uh, journeys and ceremony and others will will have Joelle, um, including the, her uh, monthly inputs uh, as to as to uh, the sun ingressing a sign. There will be freebies also in this program. Uh, it's really, really a very interesting program. I mean, I like I like what we are offering. It's like we're really offering a lot, and we hope that uh, you'll be joining. We're offering us. what we like. Honestly, Indeed. what we Indeed. what we work with, what we what we like, and how we like to tackle things, and we're weaving together, and we're really hoping that you come and you know co-create with us, creating community around you know traditional um, traditions, right? Like traditional resources, but you know um, making them make embodying them and making them more. Um, more proper to our lifetime and our modern days right so mm -hmm. yeah that's that's mm -hmm. how we like to present it yeah mm -hmm. and uh, and it will be a journey for us too it's going to be a commitment and we we would be we would be really happy for if you can join and if you're not maybe you can share it with others um, in my newsletter, I'll be adding more information on on the this pro this one year program. Uh, you can you can send the feedback on my newsletter and or connect uh, directly via email um, by to by sending a message that you're interested to join this program um, to connect at inspirited dot world um, and. There will be also a link to which you can you can say, okay, I would like to join this Q and A uh, by adding also your your email, and you will be sent the date and time to join the Q and A. Um, we're excited. Uh, while everything else is happening, we're excited to to, to really go on this journey with with uh, with you and with each other as well, and also. Um, as of today, I'm starting my my psychedelic uh, course uh, that would include a one year journey as well with experts and professionals from different parts of the world. I'm very excited. It's something that is taking this journey to a deeper extent, uh, to a clinical extent that I like, and you know, combining science, transpersonal psychotherapy, 
and also shamanism in, in the input. Uh, so quite an interesting program. Thank you all again for listening. Um, Thank you. Yes. We'll see you next episode. Thank you for your comments. Thank you for sharing. Please just send us your inputs. Write it down. Let us know what you think. Yeah. Let us know what you feel. Take care for now and God bless. Thank you. Bye. Bye.